When you think of dance, depending on your age, you may picture an Arthur Murray dance studio with students putting their feet on shoe prints painted on the floor or getting down into club with your basic ghetto bounce. Our Jeff Lockwood spoke to University of Wyoming professor of dance, Margaret Wilson, about dance from her point of pursuit. So if a student was thinking of becoming a dancer, they think New York, they think Los Angeles, they think Chicago maybe. I don't know if they think Laramie, Wyoming. So what is it about the University of Wyoming that we have to offer to the dance community and to, and to students who are interested in, in that art form? Actually, we have a very strong dance program. We're only an undergraduate program, mm -hmm. and we actually offer really superb training. Um, and we get a lot of students who come from all around the region. One of the things that we offer in this program that makes us somewhat unique is the opportunity for students to explore vertical dance. And vertical dance is um, its a very popular form right now. Lots mm -hmm. of people are, are um, attaching ropes to ceilings <laughs> and hanging bodies from that or using silk or using harnesses, um, mm -hmm. trapezes. Um, and we actually teach a class in vertical dance where we teach dancers about the safety and the rigging and oh, okay. then um, teach them movements which then we take to performance in different venues. So this is kind of a, kind of a radical, new, avant-garde sort of thing. How, in Wyoming, in Laramie, how, how did it emerge here? Why, why was vertical dance one of its, one of its places? Why, why, why here? Actually, we started, it sort of started as uh, um, an element of a production where the director wanted fairies to fly in <laughs> from the upper world, and uh, Neil Humphrey, a uh, mountaineer, had the mm -hmm. expertise to do the rigging. Okay. And then we um, were very interested in, in exploring this, and uh, Neil took a workshop with a company in San Francisco. Um, although the workshop wasn't there with Project Bandaloop, and they've been mm -hmm. doing vertical dance. They dance off the, um, uh, uh, the Space Needle in Seattle. Oh, they've done wow. um, site-specific works. And um, we were very intrigued by the fact that we live in a place where we have access to a recreational area where we can um, do similar vertical dance, but also to explore vertical dance more as an artistic medium. Um, mm -hmm. Vertical dance comes from a circus tradition right. and it's about spectacle and right. um, you know now we have Superman um, on Broadway but what we're doing is trying to create a venue where dancers can apply the information that they've learned in dance classes in a slightly different environment. And our environment has lots of vertical surfaces and people who know how to stick to them. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> yes. I wonder how important it is, if at all, for an artist, say a choreographer or a painter or a writer or, or any sort of artist, to really know and uh, even to have mastered the conventions before breaking them. Is it, and I, I kind of have this notion that maybe you have to know the rules before you can break the rules, or is that kind of an old school idea? How, how important is, is it for an artist to, uh, to sort of have a grasp and a mastery of the conventions before bending the rules. I do think it's important that the artist has an understanding of the rules. I don't, I don't if it's old school, then I'm old school. <laughs> um, because I think you need to know what people have done before. And uh. you need to have an appreciation for the boundaries that they um, not only established, but maybe enlarged through their, through their work. And at some point, probably those artists also were breaking convention. But someone's breaking of convention becomes, it the, becomes new. <laughs> the, new, the new rule. And I think that it's, it would be like learning how to speak without knowing a language or a vocabulary. And so in order to communicate, you need to have certain tools at your disposal to help you say the things that you want to say, explore the ideas that you're interested in. Mm -hmm. And so having some formal grounding in those basic concepts, I think, is important. Mastery may be a different, um, a, a different mm -hmm. um, aspect mm -hmm. of that, sure. but I think that um, to lay a firm foundation to understand what your discipline is about, be it in, in the arts or in philosophy or in science, um, that, that to go forward you really have to have that really firm grounding. How do you do that with students in the sense that on the one hand, right, you want them to grasp the conventions, mm -hmm. respect them mm -hmm. and whatnot, and then you're sending this mixed message, this, this, this wildly mixed message, right? Here's, okay, so now we're gonna break the rules. How, how as a teacher, how, how do you balance this notion of convention with 
originality and, and, and creativity. Okay. I think that um, one of the things is that a number of people who have worked on ropes and climbed on walls and, and flown through space are interested in what we do. We're very interested in working with dancers mm -hmm. who have the ability to bring their dance knowledge to the art form. Um, okay. I, I love watching climbers on the climbing wall and out at Vidavu, but what they're doing is very different than what we're doing. Mm -hmm. So in a way, we're, I, I would rather think of it as expanding their boundaries rather than breaking convention, mm -hmm. um, introducing them to vertical dance. And the one thing that I know as a teacher is that um, whatever we're emphasizing on the ground becomes rotated backwards for them 90 degrees. And so they have a totally different experience doing the same thing for a while. But then as they master that new orientation, then they can bring that experience back to their dancing. I was about to say. Do actually they, enhances their yeah, dancing. Do they actually become, for lack of a better term, do they become better horizontal dancers by virtue of experiencing vertical I think dance? So. I think so. I think so because they've been able to expand. They've been able to experience 360 degrees possibility of uh -huh. motion. Um, when you are standing and you try and lift your leg, your leg is being acted on by gravity. But when you're upside down, gravity works <laughs> on your leg by pushing it up closer to you. And uh -huh. and so all of a sudden, these things that we struggle with on the ground are much simpler. Right. And having and that new experience, things become difficult, new things suppose, become yes. difficult, absolutely. Just sitting upright is very difficult <laughs> when your feet aren't on the ground or when you're not sitting on a solid surface. So what, what I think it does is it enhances their dancing um, by giving them different experiences, which then they can bring back to their dancing in a, in a more traditional format. Well, thanks so much for taking some time to, to visit with me today. Thank I, you I for inviting me. It.